What's up? What's up? Hey, what's going on, Noah? Uh, so I'm actually using uh, Epidemic Sounds. It's kind of cool because I actually use Epidemic Sounds for my YouTube channel, so it makes it a lot easier. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying. I've been working out, doing some cardio, some low carb. <laughs> uh, I'm still trying to figure the whole thing out, though. There's like a whole bunch of stuff that I still have to learn. I need to... This is literally my first time ever streaming, so this is going to be interesting. Hey, everybody that's uh, joining and watching. If the audio is too loud, feel free to let me know as well. I'm going to just turn it down. So it's a little loud on my headphones. Let me turn it on my um, Yeah, so this is <laughs> pretty much my first build. Uh, uh, well, not my first build, but my first stream build. So this is going to be interesting. I do YouTube videos, obviously. Uh, so I just wanted to try it out, man, and see what, it, what it's like to do the whole build stream thing. Um, we're going to be building the Tofu 60 today. This is actually one of the boards that I've had for a long time. So we'll just be pretty much chaining this over. We're going to be doing this one to the aluminum Tofu case. It's going to be interesting. Um, it's a nice little heavy weight. I think I picked this up for like 76 bucks. My first build that I did with this actually turned out bad. So we'll see how this turns out. Basically, we're going to be putting some... Uh, Nabuki Silk Reds in there. Should be pretty nice, I think. Thanks for joining though, man. I appreciate it. I'll be honest with you, I was I was actually really nervous because I never streamed like face before. You know, like I can do YouTube videos all day, but it's different, you know, being on the camera live and answering questions and stuff. So So this is how we build keyboards. It's kind of the same thing, you know, the kind of came, same concept as building a computer. You got your motherboard, basically, which is your PCB. Uh, and then you just add your components on top of that. You build on top of that. Yeah, it's going to be pretty simple, though. Um, this keyboard builds not too complicated. There's like a whole bunch of other streamers on right now, too, which is totally fine. Because I feel like I'd be more nervous um, with a whole bunch of people in here because it's kind of hard to gauge what the audience is like when you have a lot of people. All right, we're going to get our stabilizers out. So I'm going to be doing... So Noah, the, the, the cool thing about the 60 is that you have your spacebar stabilizer and then you have the rest of your other stabilizers, which are 2.5U? 2. 2. 2. They're just basically the ones that go to your uh, smaller key switches, your modifiers, as you'd say. Plus, it looks, it looks so good. Do you like these keycaps, Noah? These are the GMK lasers. I got lucky. I got these for really cheap. They're like... Uh, I think like aftermarket right now, they probably sell for like $300, but I picked these up for like 135 or something like that on um, Reddit. That's the place to get the stuff. All right. You know, um, I went to, I told you I went to intro to jazz, right? Intro to jazz, man. I thought it was just going to be like some super easy, stupid class. But now, like, I, I really enjoy, like, jazz. And, like, now I listen to, like, lo fi I listen to it in a different way because I hear all the jazz samples that they use now. And I know, like, all the instruments they use. So it's kind of cool. It's okay. I don't know. If you go back to school, man, and you need some of those prereqs again, definitely think about doing those. That, that was pretty cool. And you like music. I know you like guitar and stuff. So I think it would be pretty fun. And you might have already taken intro to jazz. I don't know. But that's, that's just my experience. It's kind of funny. I just didn't expect it. Janet makes fun of me all the time. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is basically these are called wires. They look like little bars or um, I guess metal. What would this, what would you describe this? No, if looking at this, how would you describe this? What, what would you call that when you first saw that? The piece of metal. What would you describe that as? I'm just trying to get a better understanding of like of people that aren't really in the hobby yet. Would you call it a wire? People call it a wire. I don't think it's a wire. It doesn't look like a wire. Okay. All right. I guess you could say it's a wire. All right. So that's that's the wire. Basically, that's... I mean, I'm sure you've probably taken your keyboard apart. You know what it looks like. So what we're doing is we're just going to put some grease on these to keep that wire from, like, slapping the plastic of these things called stabilizers. And I'll show you how they go together in just a sec. Yeah, so the good thing about these, these are actually um, 
they're, they're called Zoo Gear on Amazon, but they're just Duroc stabilizers. Nothing crazy. Man, that focus, not bad. I'll individually do them, place them down, and then we'll add them to the PCB after. Uh, I'm not really great at it. <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's a perfection to it. Oh, there's four viewers now. Hey guys, thanks for watching. All right. Lubing some stabs. The good thing though, oh actually let me, yeah, let me finish this one real quick. I'll show you what I did today before I started the stream. It was kind of a pain. Check this out, Noah. All right, so this is the PCB we're gonna be using today. This is the DZ60. It's actually one that you always solder. And so for, for me, I know a lot of people are like, when they first get into this is they're like the biggest thing that you'll always see is that they don't want to solder and the main reason is because it's like they're worried that they're going to mess it up or i don't know they want to try different switches which i understand that's like a big thing you want to try different switches and do as many things you want because there's so many like different switches you can't have a keyboard for every for every switch right so the ability to have interchangeable switches uh, makes it so you can have one keyboard and switch all the switches so instead of having to solder in and out switches every single time waste uh, solder and money uh, you can actually uh, get a hot swap board or you can make a solderable board hot swap so check this out this is what i did today this is called mill maxing uh, basically it's these uh, let's focus it in here come on get in there these little pins you see these little pins let me uh let me get the tweezers to show you guys what it looks like these guys right here these are the pins these are the milmax uh, sockets so basically you just have these preset solderable holes and you just push those through and then once those are through you solder them in on the other side and then once you're done with every single hole and you have it aligned to the holes that you want your board is hot swappable you don't have to worry about soldering anymore um, I have two soldered keep two soldered uh, PCBs and I have like two regular hot swap PCBs but I wanted to try the Milmax yeah man that's uh so that's what I'm saying man like a lot of people they're they're so afraid of uh, soldering and honestly soldering is like really easy the issue with soldering though is desoldering if you're not good at desoldering or you don't have the right equipment to desolder that's where it gets kind of iffy so if you want to not solder you would have to buy a new PCB or you'd have to get something that's gonna get um the hot swap like that but yeah i converted this to hot swap with the mil max i hope that i align these correctly though to the plate that i have and we'll talk about that after that after this thing so it's kind of cool now i get to teach you how to build keyboards yep you can switch switch out your switches whenever you want and that's the cool thing about hot swap is like you can you can just try different switches and then like say for instance you're like dang i really like these switches for this keyboard i'm always going to use these switches because these are the, my favorite switches like i have for this um kbd 8x uh, I, I pretty much tested these these switches out in my hot swappable keyboard and then i decided these are my favorite switches so listen to this just listen to that these are the alpacas so once you decide, I mean, you can always buy a new PCB and solder it, or you can take those uh, Milmax sockets out and solder it yourself too. So that's definitely just preference, you know? All right. So now what we're gonna do, once we've like, you know, got the inside of this guy uh, all lubricated like that. And then I've got the outsides coated of this guy. I'm just trying to keep it super simple. Uh, we're not gonna do it like 100%. Um, we have that lubricated. Uh, what we're gonna do now is just take the ends of this wire, as you would call it, or however you wanna call it. It's cable, wire, whatever. And then we'll just squeeze out the grease. Just get a little dab in there. And I'm just going by my man Teja, what he teaches us on the tube of use. And then we'll just put it inside. Okay, so you see this little, uh, in there there's like this little line 
it's basically where the wire feeds through and how it goes up and down. What happens is when you get these and you take them apart like this to lube them, you might get confused as to how to put it back in. The easiest way to tell without looking is like just putting it in there and then which one will let you bend the wire down. That's it. So just doing that. And you can look at it and this, this kind of throws you off because of that angle, but this will let you bend the wire down. So this is the side that you put the wire in. And then the side that you put the wire in always goes to the side that has this little clip in piece where the wire goes into. Come on, focus. Yeah, so you got the little clip in piece right there. You just put it in there and clip it. All right, so now that we dab like Cam Newton, <laughs> now that we dab like Cam Newton into this, we're gonna place the wire inside, right? Just like that. I just like to make sure that it's got a good coat. And this is, like I said, man, this is not rocket science. You can have a lot of lube on this thing. You're good, man. You can scoop it off. You can do whatever. It's totally fine. <laughs> this is a little much. I'll be honest. I have put way too much on there. Dang it. Where's the paper though? Like I said, you just want to make sure that this wire, when you clip it in, it allows you to tilt it up and you can see the like stabilizer actuate up. Okay. That's it. Super simple. I should probably just convert this to a YouTube video later too. It'd be pretty, pretty easy. Why did I put this upside down? <laughs> what, the? what is going on with me, man? All right, sorry. I wasn't paying attention. That's my own fault. All right, there we go. All right, we're just gonna do the rest of those like that real quick. Just so I don't take up too much of your time. Especially with hot swap, you can literally take it apart and redo these if you want. If it wasn't if it wasn't hot swap uh, and it was a solder board, I would definitely, you know, I would probably put two two zero five two two zero five G zero in here, uh, and I would definitely take more time on these. But because this is hot swap and because it is a just a simple tofu build, we're just gonna be real slick and real with it. I always use my PCB as my, uh, I'm sorry, my plate. This is the plate. This is a brass plate. I picked this up on Mass Drop in a group buy. It's like 40 bucks. Uh, this is brass. I, you know, some people prefer Palm or FR4. Palm is like a, uh, almost like a plastic material. It's kind of uh, flimsy, almost like this right here. It's kind of like a soft plastic in a way. Uh, and then there's FR4, which is basically like PCB material. It's just got the cutouts like this here. But I like brass. That's me, that's my preference. Uh, and that's the thing about this, this hobby is everything is preference, nothing is perfect. So I decided to go with brass. Um, I just like the sound of it. And then when you type on it, it's got like a stiff sound, like a stiff feel. It's really just preference though. But I always use this to reference where my stabilizers and everything are gonna go. So you see when I put it on top, it's kind of like a map. So it tells you where it's gonna fit at and where it's gonna sit at. So this is where we're gonna put the other one. So I, we don't have a big shift here. Wait, do I? No, I do not have a big shift. So I actually only needed two of these, or three of these. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. I like teaching for some reason. It's really weird. I like to show people stuff and show them how to do it and like be able to do this on stream. I can have people talk to me and like find out the things they're curious about and what can help benefit them in their learning process. And then I can use this information uh, through uh, the video on demand from Twitch to upload it into YouTube so that I can help people on that platform as well. So I think it's definitely good. Yeah, man, it's it's like I said, man, it's not as easy as it's, it's not as hard as it seems. And that's that's the sad thing is like people don't realize how easy it is. And that's like the main uh, 
purpose of my recent videos on keyboard videos is like I've been focusing on the budget side of things and how easy it is and cheap it is to build them if you know where to look the only the only issue with keyboards right now is like there's a very limited production amount there's a very limited amount of companies that are willing to produce them uh, but it's getting there oh <laughs> speaking of limited amount it's like been a dry season for like group buys and new keyboard purchases oh thanks for the follow metro gang i appreciate that man sorry i didn't see that until just now my bad all right metro let's see pandora 60 oh you got the pandora okay so let's take a look at this let me go ahead and trim this down so we just see the pictures yeah this is the pandora this is the one that metro gang is talking about this thing is super nice Yeah, that one's nice. Yeah, it's very nice. This is so no, I think this is one that you would like a lot too because it has that slight underglow. It's really like uh, it's not overdone, right? That's the thing about RGB and um, underglow. People kind of overdo it sometimes. This one's very subtle. Yeah, and also it has this little encoder on the back of it, which I really like. Yeah, that's nice. I love the weight too. I think I saw Minterly did a video on it, if I'm not mistaken. This is the one that Minterly did a video on. I think she had the the PC. Oh yeah. All right, thanks for joining, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I've just been. Uh, this is my first stream, so I really appreciate you joining. But I uh, hope to see you next time. Take care, man. Thanks again for the follow. The the group buys, man. That's that's like that's what I was saying. The biggest thing is like finding those group buys and being able to jump in on that. And uh, dude, I got lost. Like it's been a dry season, man. But just recently, even with that one, September. It seems like September is the the month. All these keyboards are coming out and everybody's purchasing them up. So it's pretty cool. So this is the mode 80. This is the interest tech. So yeah, another thing, Noah, whenever there's um, an idea Right? Somebody comes up with an idea, they do an interest check to see who would be interested in purchasing this so they can gauge the amount of uh, uh, possible selling in the group buy. So it's if to see if it's even worth it and to see how much the actual cost of the board is going to be. And that'll kind of determine uh, where they're going to manufacture and everything else. This thing is nice. What I do like about this one compared to the Rama is that the bezels are very nice. I really, really like the bezels on these. Um, it's very, very thin compared to the Rama, which is kind of fat and thick. So I do like that. It also has like a muting gasket feature, which is really nice. So I, th I think these are going to be two fairly similar sounding keyboards. I don't think you'll go, you won't go wrong either way. Ooh, polished brass. I would love to get my hands on a raw body one day and just polish out the aluminum. I think that'd be pretty awesome. That's the CM Storm Quickfire uh, TKL. Yeah, I that's my first custom keyboard. I lubed the Cherry MX Retooled. I converted it to QMK, and uh, I tried to clean out and do the keycaps and stuff. And it's nice, but going from that to like an aluminum case keyboard and like adjusting sound, oh man, it's night and day. So I think people are really seeing the differences and working from home now is like also contributing to that. So it's, it's growing like crazy a lot. All right, Noah, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna basically uh, put these switches in uh, to this PCB and plate. And what this is gonna do is gonna create a support uh, and space between the plate and the switches. And this is gonna make it to where it's gonna hold it together, but at the same time, it's not gonna bend the PCB and the plate so much. Oh, geez.
These are HK Gaming keycaps. They're just budget keycaps, but these are the best sounding budget keycaps I've found. They're on Amazon. They're like 40 bucks. Uh, I just wanted keycaps that I can use to like fill up keyboards that I don't use. So this is what these are, but they sound decent. They sound good. These are actually the 808s. Check them out. They look good. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the key and I'm gonna want you to tell me which key you think it is, which switch you think it is, okay? Here we go. Which switch is that? Okay, here we go. Same switch. And then we'll do the next switch. First switch. Second switch. Which one's one, which one's two? I bet you can't tell. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. They're both JWK. The only difference that you'll hear is the spring weight. Uh, but they're totally, they're, you know, they're totally different named brand switches, but they're pretty much exactly the same. Yeah, so the first one was the silk. That was the silk red. That was the first one. Why is this so hard to get out? The second one was the alpaca. Not much difference. The spring actuation, like I said, really similar. That's the silk. And that's the alpaca. So keep in mind, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I, I think what happened was uh, basically the plate was giving me issues with connection. Uh, I might have popped loose one or two of those Momaxes, so I'll have to resell that later. But we'll do a quick sound test and a typing test uh, just to see how it sounds with these HK Gaming and the Kofu 60. Uh, thanks again, man. I really appreciate you being here. I know it's been kind of a, a long stream. This is definitely my first one. It'll be better. I, I promise that. This is kind of like my learning experience. Uh, let's, so let's go ahead and test this out. Not bad. I think it sounds pretty good. It's got, okay, so it is a tray mount, right? So the mounting points are all gonna be touching this bottom. So every time I, I hit 
it's gonna make the the case ping right so I think maybe what I can do to make it sound better is possibly adding in o-rings in between the PCB and the case to uh, kind of pick up some of that vibration that comes in between um, and like yeah I, I could definitely add some of that sound deadening uh, material that you were saying also the foam uh, but overall I think it <laughs> I mean, it looks good, man. I really, I really, really like the look of the tofu. The, the, I really like just the, the side of it. You know, it's like, it's got a good weight to it. It's sleek, right? It's not like overdone. It's got this little button function in the bottom. Uh, it's got the uh, RGB built in too, which kind of bleeds into the rest of the keyboard. Yeah, I, I, I think so, man. It, it looks really sharp, like. There's nothing wrong with this keyboard. It's really, really, really nice build. Super cheap. I think it's definitely a great budget option. One of my favorite things about this though, is that you can build just a like standard $100 kit. Yeah, sure. No problem, man. I hope you like them. Let me know what you think. Feel free to hit me back on the channel or you can hit me up on uh, uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter. Feel free to let me know what you guys think on that. Um, but yeah, I think I think this is definitely a good option. Um, some of my one of my most popular videos right now is the hundred dollar budget keyboard build kit, uh, which is basically where you can build your entire keyboard, custom keyboard with plastic case for a hundred dollars, and it's a it's a nice keyboard. Oh yeah, I definitely want to add some some foam to it. And then once once you get that budget build, you can purchase this case, the tofu case, and you can transplant all that budget build into this tofu case without having to buy and rebuild a whole new keyboard. And then you have that. You know more higher end feel and aesthetic and you can add those little modifications like the rubber and foam to get a better sound i think it's definitely a good setup i really like it this is uh my first keep this so I, I ordered this case oh man did I, did I put the i did put the keys right why is that h looks so funny i think the switches aren't in all the way but uh yeah i ordered this case like super super long ago i think it took me Maybe a month to get it, unfortunately, but uh, it's definitely something that I would definitely recommend picking up. But yeah, I appreciate it, guys. Um, I really appreciate you guys coming to the stream. Thanks so much for chatting with me and hanging out. This has been fun. This is uh, my first stream. I hope it's gonna be the first of many. <laughs> I I borked, you know, I broke this thing a couple times. Mainly, so one of the things I learned today was if you're gonna do something right, do it right. Uh, I I. I took a chance and I thought that I could mill max this uh, and not have a, uh, a bolted PCB to the um, plate. It turned out to be more issue than it was worth. Uh, but overall, I mean, it sounded good. I was able to fix a couple things here and there. Uh, I think I did fix all the switches. I did bend some pins, uh, but there is some unevenness and I, did, I need to go back later and figure that out. But uh, for the sake of finishing the stream in time, I did want to just get this done and looking okay. But overall, I think uh, it looks pretty good. 60% keyboard. And I specifically made it so I can have arrows. I can't have a 60% keyboard without arrows, unfortunately. I appreciate you guys coming out, though. I mean, it really means a lot. I know I'm new. I know you guys could have watched a lot of other people. But uh, you came to this one, and that means a lot. So I really appreciate it. Uh, like I said, in the beginning of the stream and in the stream in the middle of the stream, uh, I will be practicing building custom keyboard cables uh, like the one that I have here. And I'm not the best at it. So it'll definitely be a, you know, semi-scuffed cable, depending on how good I am at it eventually. And after the stream is done, I'm going to be giving these away because uh, I'm just pretty much making them so I can practice making them. So I think it'd be pretty cool to give it away for you guys. I appreciate you guys coming out and uh, I'll definitely uh, be posting up videos of this VOD soon. So thanks for joining and you'll probably be in that VOD and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.